Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I thought I would share a practice with you to help open up the hips. Now many of us experience a lot of tightness and tension in our hips, especially if we're spending a lot of time seated, if we're at the office all day, working from home. And a lot of us will experience tight hips if we're also used to working out our lower half. Um, even if you have quite open hips, it's really great practice to still bring awareness to them because it's such an integral, important part of our body. So even when we have open hips, we need to work to activate the muscles around the hips and really work the hip from all angles because it is a ball and socket joint. Um, so let's get started today and do this brief practice together. We'll come to a seated position and we're going to begin in a pose called fire log. So have your, both of your knees bent. I'm going to take my left knee to rest on the mat with the left heel towards the right hip and then you're going to cross the right leg right over top. Have your shin stack one over top of the other and it's really important to flex the top foot that we're protecting the knee. Now for most people, the legs might not um, touch together. There might be a little bit of a gap here. For some people, the gap might look something like this or like this, just depending on the shape of your hips as well. Um, I always like to take a little pillow or if you have a block, um, any support to go in between the knee and the bottom ankle. That'll create a little bit more of support so that you can sit up nice and tall. So I want you to press your sit bones down into the earth here. Sit up and lift up through the crown of your head so you're in a tall seat, still flexing the foot here. You'll begin to hinge at the hips and fold forward. Now this movement might look something like this. It might be very subtle. Or you might start to fold a little bit further down. You want to make sure that you're still pressing the sit bones down into the earth so that if the bottom even lifts up slightly, you want to come back to that tall seat again, press the sit bones down and then fold back. So we do this pose so that we can build awareness of where our hips are at today. And always keep in mind that your hips will feel different from day to day. It just depends on how your body feels, what kind of movements you've been taking recently. So just sort of start to tune into that. You can even soften your eyes as you hold whatever variation you're in, either folding forward or maybe you're still sitting up tall. Now press into your sit bones to lift yourself all the way back up to that tall seat. Extend your legs long and we'll switch sides. So the right leg comes underneath you. You'll stack the left shin above the right. Flex the top foot again and make sure that the ankle rests on top of the knee here. Again, you can take a support either pillow block if you have one in between the legs and come to press your sit bones firmly into the earth. Create that nice tall spine. And as you exhale, you might begin to hinge at the hips and fold forward while maintaining that the sit bones are rooted down here. Again, noticing if the hips start to lift up with you, let me decide to come back up, press your sit bones down, and then start to come forward. Tuning into how your hips feel, any sensation in the lower half of your body. You'll press into your sit bones again to lift yourself all the way back up. You can take any support or block that you have underneath you, send the legs along, give them a little shake, and we'll come to a child's pose position. So with child's pose, you have your knees fairly wide apart, your toes touching. You can extend your arms out long in front of you. Just allow your forehead to rest on the mat. No need to contract any muscles here. You can release your belly. Just 
notice the rise and fall of your back body as you inhale and exhale here. into your finger pads now to lift yourself up so that you're on all fours. Have your shoulders stacked above your wrists and your knees to rest just underneath the hips and you can have your knees about hip width distance apart. I'm going to move through a couple of cat-cow stretches here. So start by moving your tail bone back, arch your spine and press your chest forward as you gaze up towards the sky. As you exhale, move from the tailbone first. Allow that movement to ripple forward down your thoracic, cervical spine. Now gaze in towards your navel as you lower the head. And as you inhale, press your tailbone back. Arch your back body and press your chest forward as you inhale. And exhale as you hollow out your belly and gaze in. Your way back to a neutral spine. You can take a couple, a couple of sways in your hips from side to side. You can even turn and look left to right. Just to give your hips a little bit of a stretch here. Curl your toes under. You'll lift your hips back up to the sky. Come into a downward facing dog. Now take any movement here that feels natural to your body. So you might bend one knee and straighten the other. You can even sway hips side to side and nod your head no and yes a few times. And you'll arrive in stillness once you're ready. Take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale, sigh out your mouth. Inhale to lift your right leg up towards the sky. So come to a three-legged dog. Take a bend in your right knee now start to stack your hips, so your right hip above your left. Kind of keep your shoulders square and even weight into your hands. You press into your finger pads here so the weight does not fall into the wrist. So you want to be very gentle there. Start to breathe into any sensation that you feel in this opening in the hips. Now as you exhale, start to bring your hips back to center. You'll step your right foot to the outside of the right palm. Lower your left knee down and uncurl your back toes. So arriving in a lizard pose. Now you might stay lifted up onto your palms here as you hug the left knee in towards, or the right knee in towards your right shoulder. Now for a deeper opening, you might lower all the way down to your forearms. You can take a block if you have one and lower yourself down for support here. Now a third variation, you might curl your left toes under and lift your left knee to hover above the mat. Wherever you are, you can draw the right knee in towards the midline of your body as you maintain length in your spine. Lower the left knee back down to the earth. Press yourself back up onto your palms. Next, we'll move into the outside of our right foot. So moving onto the knife edge of the right foot. And at the same time, you will flex the foot so that the toes lift up towards your shin. And the right knee will start to turn away from your body. You can use your right palm to press into the thigh here. So we're moving to this lizard twist. Now this might be your expression for today. Or if this is too much, you can always return back to, into a regular lizard pose without the twist. So you can experiment with the two just to see what feels good on this side. You might experiment with the twist. You can lift your right arm up towards the sky. And if you'd like a little quad stretch in the left leg, you can take a bend in your back leg. Reach around and grab the left foot. As you exhale, you might kick the foot into your hand. So this is a pretty deep hip opener here. Find your variation of choice. 
I just know that it's not so much about the depth here. Do what feels good in your body today. So we'll start to lower our right palm back down to the earth if you have it lifted. Start to walk your right foot back to the center of your mat. Press up onto your fingertips and you'll lift your torso to hover above the hips now. So we're coming into our low lunge position. You place your hands on your hips just to create some stabilization here. So you'll draw your left hip forward, right hip back a little bit. You should have your stip hips stacked above the left knee. So we want to be very gentle with our back body here by keeping the core engaged and still lifting up through the crown of our head. Now for today, I'd like you to take your fingers around your rib cage and then you'll wrap your thumbs towards the back of your ribs so that you're just holding that space. You'll take an in-breath here at center and as you exhale, you'll turn and twist from the rib basket towards the right side. So turning towards your front bent knee. You're keeping your hips stable here as you twist. Inhale to come back to center. As you exhale, turn and twist towards your bent knee again. Inhale, center. One more breath, exhale as you twist. This time, sweep your arms out to the sides, creating a little T shape, and have your palms facing towards the side of the room. Start to lower your left palm down to the earth, so it's alongside the front toes. Sweep the right arm above you so that you're stacking your right shoulder above your left. So you're in this sort of revolved low lunge. You'll start to curl your left toes under, then lift your left knee to hover above the mat. So now we're in a high revolved lunge. So we begin to lower the right palm back down to the earth. Frame your front foot. You can walk the right hand to the inside of the right foot now, and then at the same time, start to pivot your back heel so it rests down on the earth. You're going to press firmly into both of your feet here. You'll sweep your arms up towards the sky and out to the sides to land in a warrior two pose. So you'll notice how the left toes point in towards the midline of your body and you're reaching your arms in opposite directions, but finding softness by releasing your shoulders down and away from the ears. You start to interlace your fingers behind your back body, squeeze your shoulder blades together, but relax and soften the shoulders away from the ears. And as you exhale, you start to hinge forward, so towards the inside of your bent knee. And at the same time, your arms will start to pull up and away from you. Allow your head to hang. Notice the opening in the chest, opening in the hips here. And then you'll press into your feet, slowly rise all the way back up. Sweep your arms back out to the sides. And you'll pivot your left foot so that both toes are now facing towards the corners of your mat. Now take another deep bend in the knees. Now if you need, you can bring your feet a little bit closer together. Now flip over to your side so that we can all come into this pose together. Now take a bend at the elbows and we're going to create this pose called a goddess. So you notice how the legs are perpendicular to the floor, 90 degree angle with the knees stacked above the ankles. Keep your chest lifted as you point the tailbone down towards the earth and as you hold in this posture. Start to straighten the legs, straighten the arms all the way up to the sky. You might even look up here. As you exhale, lower the hips, sit back down to land in your goddess pose again. We'll do a couple breaths like this together. Inhale, lift back up, and exhale as you lower down into your goddess pose. Place your hands on your hips, start to straighten both legs, and then pivot your feet so that your toes now face the front of the room. Keep your chest lifted here. As you exhale, hinge at the hips to fold forward. So we're coming into a wide-legged forward fold. Release your hands to the earth. Maintain length in your spine as you fold. 
want to lift your sit bones up towards the sky. So notice a little gentle opening in the backs of the legs. Take deep breaths here. We'll press into your palms now to lift your spine up halfway lift. And exhale as you fold back down and crawl yourself towards the top of your mat as you pivot both feet at the same time. Plant your palms down, step back into a plank position, and we'll come into a flow here. So you'll exhale to lower down, either onto your knees or you can come down into Chaturanga. Inhale to peel your chest up for a baby cobra. You might come into an upward facing dog. And whenever you're ready, you'll curl your toes under, lift your hips up, downward facing dog. You can take a breath in through the nose and exhale as you sigh out the mouth. <sighs> lift your left leg up towards the sky. Take a bend in the knee, stack your hips. Keep your shoulders square as you breathe into the opening there. As you exhale, Step forward to the outside of your left palm. Lower your right knee down to the earth. So we're coming into our lizard pose on this side. Now again, you might stay lifted up on your palm. You can lower down into your forearms. If you have a block or if you have any, a book or any sort of support that you can use for underneath you, you can feel free to use that as support. And if you wish, you can also curl your right toes under lift your right knee to hover above the mat. Now wherever you are today, I'd like you to try to draw the left knee in towards your left shoulder. Now if your back leg is lifted, lower it back down. And if you're on your forearms or all the way down, you can press yourself back up so that you're high on your palms. Take any blocks or support just off to the side. We'll come into that twisting lizard. So roll into the ninth edge of your left toe or your left foot. The left knee will start to press away from you. You can use your left palm here to press into the thigh as you twist toward the left side. You might sweep the left arm up towards the sky if you wish. For a deeper quad stretch, you might take a bend in the right leg and you might reach around and grab the outside of the foot. And as you exhale, gently kick the foot into the hat. Lower the left palm back down if it's lifted. Gently walk the left foot back to the center of your mat. Frame your foot with your fingertips here. Once you're ready, you can lift yourself up into a low lunge position. I like to place my hands on my hips here just so that I can stabilize and find my balance here. Now, if you ever have sensitive knees as well, you can always uh, curl your mat over, create a little bit of support and padding for the knee if you need, that's always available to you. And then we'll take our fingers to wrap around the rib cage. Inhale here at center, long spine. And as you exhale, turn and twist towards the left side, just twisting from the ribs and the waistline. Want to keep the hips steady here as you come back to center. As you exhale again, turn to the left. Inhale back to center. Exhale, turn, twist to the left. This time sweep your arms out to the side and have your palms face the left side of the room. Lower your right palm down to the earth. Sweep the left arm up so one shoulder stacks above the other. You'll start to curl your right toes under. Lift the right knee to hover above the mat. Lower your top arm back down to the earth. Walk the left hand to the inside of the left foot. Pivot your back toes so that the heel rests down. You'll press into your feet, windmill your arms up and out to the sides to land in your warrior two pose. Now, find a little bit of softness in this pose. Maybe you release your shoulders down and away from your ears, but still keep your arms active here. Again, notice if you tend to grip in your toes, evenly distribute the weight in both of your feet. 
Now we'll interlace our fingers behind our back body. This time take your non-dominant grip. Inhale your chest forward. And as you exhale, begin to hinge forward towards your bent knee. At the same time, your arms will start to pull up and away from your body. So at the same time as we're getting a hip stretch, we're creating this opening in our chest and our heart space. Press evenly into both feet as you rise all the way back up. You can place your hands on your hips. Take a deep bend in both of your knees now and pivot the right toe so that they're facing outwards and have both heels pointing in towards the midline of your body. You can take a shorter stance if you need, readjust where necessary. We'll come into a second set of a goddess pose. For this one, our second set, we'll place our hands on our thighs and creating that 90 degree shape with the legs if possible. Uh, lift up through the crown of your head so you maintain that length in the upper body and as you exhale you'll twist towards the right side of the room as you bring the left shoulder in towards the center. Inhale to press yourself back up to center and as you exhale turn and twist to the left. So you're using your palms here as leverage to press into the thighs. Inhale to come back to center. We'll turn and twist one more on each side. Moving to the right. Inhale, press to center. And as you exhale, one more to the left. Press back up to center. Start to straighten your legs. Pivot your feet so that the toes face forward. And we'll do a second set of a forward fold. So if you wish, you might interlace your fingers behind your back body, and then you'll start to fold forward. You can have another little opening for the chest as you squeeze the shoulder blades together. Just breathe into the backs of your legs as you lift your sit bones up towards the sky. Slowly start to release your palms to the earth. Press into your finger pads to lift your spine up a halfway lift. And exhale as you fold back down. Crawl yourself towards the top of your mat as you pivot both feet. We'll step back into a plank pose. We'll do a flow just to rinse it out. So your flow of choice, you can come down onto your knees. You can take an inhale here in high plank, lower down into your push-up or chaturanga. Inhale to come up into your up dog or cobra pose. And exhale to arrive in a downward facing dog where we'll all meet. Let all the air out of your lungs once you come to stillness. And inhale to lift your right leg up towards the sky. And as you exhale, draw the right knee in towards your chest. And you'll lower the knee now towards your right wrist. You'll lower the shin to the earth, extend the left leg long behind you to so come into a pigeon pose. Now before I settle in my pigeon pose, I always like to sway the hips side to side, just to get another little feel for the hips and where they're at today. Uh, for this pose, I encourage you all to walk your fingertips out to the side so that your torso starts to turn towards your front knee. This will allow the left hip to draw forward a little bit here so that our hips will start to face towards the short end of our mat. Now, if you like to do a reclining pigeon, you can feel free to start to fold here. And if you find that you're a little more comfortable coming back up and then lowering back to recline at center, you can feel free to do that as well. Now, pigeon pose can feel different for so many of us. It just depends on where your body's at. All of our hips are different shapes as well. So there's lots of different modifications and variations that you can take in pigeon. Now, if you have any blocks or any support at home and say if your hips don't touch the earth, a really great variation is to take a block underneath your hip 
just so that you can allow the hips to stabilize here. Another really great variation I love to do with the block is to place the block actually underneath my chest. That way I'm um, ensuring that my spine and chest stay lifted. And when there's more length in the spine, we can create more space for the hips to open. So this is also a really great one too. Whenever you're ready, you can lift yourself back up to a tall seat. And what you'll do is you'll bring your weight into your right hip. You'll swing the left leg forward. You'll cross the leg to rest in front of you. You'll place your left foot in front of your right thigh here. You're going to bring your left hand to rest on your lower back behind you on the floor so that you're using it kind of like a little kickstand here. Lift your chest up nice and tall, lift through the crown of your head. You'll inhale to sweep the right arm up and as you exhale, a little spinal twist towards the left side of the room. Final twist in between little hip openers and make your way back to center extend the left leg back behind you curl the back toes under we'll step back into your downward facing dog again you can pedal out your feet or take any movement here that feels natural just to rinse out that last pose We'll move to the other side so you lift your left leg up to the sky and as you exhale bring your left knee towards your left wrist lower your shin down to the earth and we'll come into your pigeon pose on this side again you can take a little sway to the hips and notice how they feel it's always normal to if one hip feels slightly different from the other no worries we're not always built with perfectly symmetrical hips. In fact, I'm sure that there's very few of us that have symmetrical hips. Um, so you can always feel free. Again, you can take your block to rest underneath you or not. I'll encourage you today to bring your fingertips forward in front of your front knee and recline forward from here so that we allow the right hip to come forward a little bit. Slowly press yourself back up. This time bring your weight into your left hip. You'll swing your right leg forward. Cross the foot to rest on the floor in front of your left thigh. Place your right palm back behind you to rest on the mat. Sweep the left arm up. And as you exhale, turn and twist towards the right side of the room. A little spinal twist here. Make your way back to center. This time we'll extend our legs out long in front of us. You can give your legs a little bit of a shake here. Place the soles of your feet down on the mat. And lower yourself all the way down to your back body. Once you arrive here, you'll hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. Just sway your hips side to side just to release the lower back. And last pose, we're nearing the end of our practice. So lift your legs up and we'll come into a happy baby pose. So for happy baby, you'll reach through the inseam of your legs, grab a hold of your shins, your ankles, or the outsides of your feet, whatever you're able to grab. Now you wanna keep your, both your shoulders and your sacrum or the lower back rooted on the floor here. You might sway, again, your knee, your hips from side to side. A little gentle release here, the hips, lower back. 
come to stillness now. And you'll use your hands to bring the soles of your feet together. Lower your legs down to the earth. We'll make our way into this Baddha Konasana, or butterfly, or cobbler's pose, as it's known. You can rest your palms somewhere along your hips, on your thighs, or on the floor beside you. Just allow your eyes to soften. Breathe through any sensation that you feel in the lower half of your body. And stay in this pose for as long as you like. Whenever you're ready, you can extend your legs long. Flip your palms to face up towards the sky and come to a final shavasana. Just allow that practice to sink in. And then instead now focus your attention on relaxing all parts of your body. No need to hold or contract any more muscles. Simply surrender to this place of rest. In Shavasana, you can feel free to stay here. Whenever you're ready, you can bring some movement back into your body. You can roll over to your favorite side. And you can press yourself all the way up slow. And we'll end our practice by joining our hands in a prayer position in front of the chest bow your head down in gratitude. Now for gratitude to our bodies and our breath, our health. And I thank you all so much for allowing me to guide you through this practice. Namaste.